busiest boat park over the last week as you see the men's single skulls line up with the five times world champion Mahe Drysdale occupying lane number three. Andre Sinek, the man who won in Belgrade, here he is uh, uncharacteristically in an outside lane, the world champion of 2010 in Carapiro when he went to the home of Mahe Drysdale and got the victory. Britain's Alan Campbell sits two from the top of the picture and in your picture now this 28 year old who hails from Coleraine, bronze medalist of the past two seasons. And then in lane number three, Mahe Drysdale, who most importantly has had a great winter of preparation. He hasn't done too much in the way of running, but he's been getting fit through cycling kilometer after kilometer and it's worked for him. He says, I feel pretty good. He's going to need to, because right next to him is Marcel Hacker, the man who gave him a heck of a race in the World Championships in 2006 and hopes to do just that and a bit more in London. A former world champion himself. And now representing Cuba, Angel Fournier Rodriguez, the man who finished third, a fantastic achievement in Belgrade, and here in the final again proving that his form is no fluke. And then closest to you, Zhang Liang. He was fourth in Belgrade. Uh, had a little bit of a rock and roll existence in the men's skulls. On his day, though, he's a man to be respected. The final of the men's single skulls. China. Mahe Drysdale in three. The world champion, the owner of the world best time. And gets away uh, pretty well. So does Sinek on the far side. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, it's uh, not very characteristic for Ronder Sinek to be on the outside. But he's, he, un unlike Mahe Dreisel, unlike Alan Campbell, he doesn't really care too much about first places. He knows he's good enough to eventually go through to the finals. So even if he, he likes to toy around a little bit in the preliminary heats, in the quarterfinals, in the semifinals, so um, I won't read too much. I wouldn't read too much in uh, in him being in the outside lanes. He'll probably uh, make his move in the third 500 meters. What is perhaps more significant as we see the early stages here is the absence of the reigning Olympic champion, the two-time champion Olaf Tufte, and also Sweden's Lasse Karonen. Uh, those two men who've been pretty steady in terms of getting in finals, fifth, sixth place. And obviously, Tufte was also a man who never really much bothered about what happened in between Olympic Games, although he did win the world title. But really, for him to figure in the Olympic Games final uh, would be now something of a surprise. It would be indeed, because Olaf Tufte, he didn't even, he was way back in the back in the semi-finals, never even close to qualifying in the third, second or first position, just squeezed in the quarter-finals for the semi-finals. I, w I was expect actually expecting him to be in the C-final in this yeah, turn. And actually, neither he or Karonen actually started in the B-final earlier today. They just didn't bother with the race at all. And it was actually won by Grisconis, the Lithuanian. Through the first 500 meters, lane two, Alan Campbell, fast starting. But managing his energy better these days, but he needs to conserve for that final sprint. He also needs to deal with Drysdale, particularly in the third quarter. In the third quarter, that's that's where Mahe Drysdale usually pours on the power and just goes to the front of the field. Right now, Mahe Drysdale trailing a little bit in fourth position. It's uh, Alan Campbell's uh, together with Andre Sinek on the far side. And it's uh, Angel Fournier Rodriguez, the, the Cuban single scholar who's been the, the surprise of the season right now, tying for third with Mahe Drysdale, who's moving up to the front right now. And then you've got Zhang on the near side in picture now. Zhang, who's 25 years of age. Home for him is Hunan at this moment. Tenth last year, fifth two years ago in Carapiro. Uh, only in the heats in Beijing. So he, he has made progress, but whether he's good enough uh, on the day, on the very big day, well, time will tell. But Hacker, he's an enigma. At his best, he is fantastic. He didn't come to Belgrade because he really wasn't in shape. He was fighting two teammates, Podovsky and Rocha, to get a place. Well, he's seen them off here in the regatta here. It was a massive entry for men's single skulls. But can he produce the goods now? Because he's a man who... As we said, can win, 
He was an Olympic bronze medalist way back in Sydney. He was a world champion in 2002. That's Hacker. But you're looking at Scenic on the far side, lane one, inspired by Vaslav Halupa, the man who yesterday received the Thomas Keller medal. But right now it's four boats in the lead and two boats in the back. It's uh, Angel for New Rodriguez, Mahe Drysdale, Ma Alan Campbell, and Ondre Sinek from the bottom of your picture up towards uh, the, the, bottom, the upper lanes. Uh, and uh, it's anyone's game right now, actually. Well, this is the third quarter where we expect Mahe Drysdale traditionally to you know, really impose himself. Remember, he didn't have the best of fortunes in Beijing. He got a tummy upset that really debilitated and weakened him, weakened him and still came through and got the bronze medal, which was a pretty good achievement. But now he wants to stay 100% fit. And here, closest to you, in lane five, you've got Angel Funio Rodriguez right up there with the big boys. Right up there with the big boys. And that's... I mean, I'm, I'm so glad that he's here because he, he just upsets the entire program. We would have expected Lossi Caronen or Olaf Tufti in the final, maybe even Mindafas Kistonis who won the B final, but he's here and he's actually producing what we'd like to see, a tough race. Racing up there with the big champions with Mahe Drysdale, Under Sinek and Alan Campbell. But these three rowers from Great Britain, Czech Republic and New Zealand are slowly but surely edging away from the Cuban singles guy. Mahe Drysdale, 32 years of age, at the height of his powers, a man who's absolutely gone into the history of single sculling. You, if you made it his specialist sub subject for Mastermind or one of those quiz programs, I'm sure he'd get 100% because he just knows everything. And there you can see again, Angel just looking across to his right. He's unfortunately he's a little bit detached now. And over on the far side, it's Scenic, the former world champion against Drysdale, the reigning world champion. Alan Campbell being taken on by Fournier. He's not out of this. Hacker disappointing. He's off the pace. Zhang not at the races either at the moment. But on the near side, closest to you, the man from Guantanamo. Then it's Mahe Drysdale. Then Campbell, who's lost ground, and this is his Achilles heel, losing position in the middle of the race. Yeah, and again, deceptive angle right here. We need to point that out. It's not uh, Fournier Rodriguez in the lead. It's actually a tussle between Mahe Drysdale and Andre Sinek, and it looks to be Mahe Drysdale just by a smallest of bow balls in the lead in front of Andre Sinek. Yeah, if you look at the lanes, you can just see across them that Mahe being taken on by Sinek. Sinek, who did what Vaslav Kalupa did or tried to do for so many years, but he did it in Karapiro. He succeeded. He won the world singles. And here, Mahi Drysdale, first serious outing. He knows that Sinek is one of his main challengers. And here he is with that probably less than a canvas advantage coming in front of the enclosure. And look at them really sprinting this is the gladiatorial side of men's single skulls shoulder to shoulder no quarter asked no quarter given scenic looks and goes again drysdale asked and is trying to raise the answer scenic right in lane one drysdale in lane three they come towards the line scenic on the far side he found it Drysdale second, and look how far they pulled ahead of Angel Fournier Rodriguez, who rightly raises his arm in triumph, having taken the scalp of Alan Campbell, Marcel Hacker, and also Zhang, who finished in sixth place. Well, there are two men who are delighted in that race. One is Andre Sinek, because he was asked a big question, and he found the answer with race pace towards the end. And our Cuban... Angel Fournier Rodriguez is on the podium for the second Samsung World Cup regatta in a row. The thing which you could tell about best from that race was that last year in Bled at the World Championships, Mahe Drysdale was easy, could easier raise his rate. Right now he was struggling with his rate. He couldn't get it above 37, 38 strokes a minute. Sinek just raising it to 40, 41, 42, just able to push back, push, push his hands away further. And Mahe Drysdale just slowly, longer strokes, but not, not, as, not as effective as Sinek was. So in the days that remain in the days that remain he needs to he needs to improve his ease in rowing he needs to improve his sprinting capabilities but i don't think that's a surprise to him i think he's 
relatively happy with the fact that he can compete at this level with Andre Sinek and he knows he has to improve his sprinting because he wasn't that fast off the blocks either and he wasn't that fast in the final 500 meters so if he wants to win that are those two those two parts of the race those parts of the race are the, are the, the parts that he needs to improve on that middle thousand is where he's really got to kill off Sinek's chance of sprinting that said Sinek will know himself that he actually hasn't beaten Ma uh, Mahe by that much and exactly that is the that's the entire game it's a it's a it's mental warfare as well you know i know you're sprinting there i'm sprinting there and this guy has just been proven himself to be a master at mental warfare beating alan campbell one of the seasoned veterans in the single skull you know in terms of world rowing we've had south africans getting their best result up in silver medal position and now you've got this man from cuba and it really is worth actually stating what